Hello, kids. Welcome back to another month of the Chichester Chats. I am here. Lilith is back. And, of course, the star of our show, Mr. DG Chichester. Hello, sir. Phil, Lilith, good to see, hear you guys, as always. Uh, hope everyone's doing great. It's always good to talk to you. <laughs> What's been going on? Uh, not a lot. Uh, what have, oh, you, come what on. have you been you, doing? Have you been taking more trips? I see, you, I always see pictures, but I'm like, do you have those saved, saved up? You, or? You, you're, you always say not a lot. You guys like run like 30 podcasts a week. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so we're I sitting at our house doing podcasts. Yeah. I, I <laughs> never understand how you know you produce so much quality content and I like struggle over a line. Um, no, those pictures I've been posting. Um, I have a, I have a time lag in my social media. I cannot, I don't know if I can't stand, but I've never been able to master the, the real time moment of like, Oh yeah, take that picture and post it right here. And, you know, tell everyone what a great crappy meal, you know, this was right in the moment. Uh, um, I have friends who do that. In fact, the friend I was on that trip with, hate it one of the meals we had and had to immediately get on yelp and let the world know how terrible it was <laughs> but uh no i tend to um kind of gather them up and then say wow look i took 12 pictures and one half of one is decent if i <laughs> if i go in and manipulate it and then i'll decide to, to share that so uh that was um yeah that was uh toward the end of probably more toward the end of september uh, some of those pictures from from Maine and such, which was a nice area. Yeah, I was waiting for pictures to hit the timeline of uh, that one you and Fabian had. No, we took <laughs> not one picture. You know, we we laughed about it, we joked about it. Uh, you know, we said, "Oh, we should uh, take one," but we we did nothing. We we just uh, we should have taken some pictures of the the waiters uh, who were just shooting us nasty looks because we just sat there. It, well, you know, we got to this restaurant and it was super crowded, and uh, and then. But there was nobody left by the time we left, you know. And you know they're they're trying to shut down between lunch and and dinner, and uh, and the two of us were just kind of kicking back, and uh, you know the, the waiter shifts from the, uh, you know, can I get you anything else to uh, how the hell do I get you out of here? <laughs> Damn writers! <laughs> exactly. Let me spill the coffee on you as I bring it to you. That kind of thing. So. It's kind of weird to ask people. I, I think you've known for a long time, you know, for a picture. If somebody else shoots it of you. I think it's it's a lot easier than like saying to me at least. Again, but I'm. I What's just that saying? You know your best friends when you don't when you only have like a uh, like a collective of like maybe three photos together. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> you know it's it's. I mean, it's, it's certain. I just some people just wow at it again. Wow, Lilith is my best friend there. I think we have maybe three pictures to get. <laughs> See? I there think you maybe go. two, quite possibly, without like Charlie or Mazer. I think maybe Oh yeah, two. yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know if I ever asked you this. Uh, it, uh have you been watch did you watch She Hulk the whole series? I, I did. I did. I was I was a little bit behind, uh, so I had to catch up uh and and was able to avoid uh, spoilers and and such but i uh i thought it was great i mean i beyond the daredevil appearance which was wonderful and hysterical uh i just uh i i thought it had its own character and uh you know identity uh, i wonky special effects you don't bother me like they do some people uh i think they had an amazing uh finger on the pulse of both internet trolls and, <laughs> and, and and an ability to uh, channel what I remember is the feeling of that book. I haven't read that book and if it's even still around as a standalone book, but I haven't read any, any of it in, in forever and a day, but that's the quality that stands out to me is the breaking the third wall, you know, charming character, uh, a lot of fun, you know, with, it. as opposed to if you go to say, and a, totally appropriate way to do it but if you read immortal hulk or something like that and she hulk in there is uh, you know one one step away from feral you know which makes sense for that book but i yeah. like this interpretation and daredevil was was great i mean i know there were people who were just thrilled to see charlie cox um as anyone who was a fan of what he did would be but then there were of course the people who were like what's the color scheme on that costume and <laughs> How can he possibly smile and appear in daylight and all that kind of 
kind of stuff. Uh, but they, they don't know him. that he can fill the colors. It's fine. I guess, but I mean, what a great line, you know, when it's like, you know, uh, dare, you know, who are you? I'm Daredevil. You know, well, ketchup and mustard's a pretty daring choice. I mean, that's like, yeah, I mean, that was just, just going. You know, I, I could see the two of them, or because they had such great chemistry. I think probably everybody has great chemistry with, with that actress, but. Uh, I could see them just speeding up the dialogue and playing them like a moonlighting back and forth <laughs> between them uh, and with both sexual tension and legal nonsense sort of going on. That would be a pretty fun half an hour. Yeah, I, I did want to ask you about the Daredevil because that is interesting. Cause it's like you've written so much Daredevil. It's just like, hmm, uh, you know, I just always interested in what your take is like on anything Daredevil and stuff. Yeah, I think this is total conjecture but uh, as i have no inside track or, or anything but if this is the way they're introducing him and reintroducing him it, it it just says to me that that makes it's the perfect place to introduce him if you are going to do some tv extended movie version of of born again because everyone's like well we want the dark daredevil i want the dark devil i want the dark daredevil you know from netflix especially but you can't do born again necessarily right in my mind if you start with the dark daredevil if you remember when born again kicked off it was it was he was he was not happy go lucky but he had a penthouse and he had a law office and he had you know he was a pretty happy character in, in some ways yeah he had well like happy that. for matt yeah happy for matt right happy <laughs> had some, for matt had some money but he was dating. had some yeah. money yes things were things were going on that like he is kind of now i think so i think this is if this is what you're starting with and then in whatever new interpretation this is he gets in fisk's face or fisk just doesn't like somebody you know jumping around the the city and in uh, yellow and red, uh, then you know, that's too a great... hungry. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Where's my papaya dog? I, oh wait, it's just I got a costume. And then uh, you know, it's a pretty great way to sort of then turn you know, turn the dial on the character. Yeah, if they do that, they're going to play room to flesh it out because I think they said it's going to be eighteen episodes. Or yeah, something. it's a yeah. good good stretch. And I don't know if those are meant to be half hour episodes, hour, whatever it is. It's a it's a it's a really extended amount of time to play with it's almost like network tv stuff yeah like link for the well, network. And it's an experiment like as, as a shareholder at disney um they got to get those viewership numbers up over on disney plus because they follow right. the last three quarters and i think that's a fantastic idea is to mess with the formula of their tv series to see if it's still viable i think it's a still viable format absolutely and and the pacing and what you're trying to do with the show. I mean, I'm, I know some people, because I guess people have nothing to do except complain about stuff. I mean, I know some people are down on Andor, uh, the star Wars show, uh, which is, uh, I think supposed to be 18 or 24 episodes, maybe itself. You but... should be excited for it. I mean, Andor, they have so much world building that they can explore. Like, and as a star Wars fan, you should be excited about that. I, I <laughs> totally agree. We're I totally agree. I think the pacing on it is terrific. It's different. I, I love it. I, I just, the whole vibe of it is, but some people are like, Oh, it's so slow. It's watching. You know, uh, paint star dry Wars has always been slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> have you ever watched the movies <laughs> it's I all have. political dialogue and intrigue and subtle backstabbing like come it, on it, exactly that trade federation discussions uh you know and and the uh the non-romantic qualities of sand yes they're all exactly uh, <laughs> <laughs> this guy gets it <laughs> but again it's not skywalkers or anything so you don't know which i mean it, again it's kind of a prequel but you don't know a lot of what's no you don't and that's wonderful isn't it it is great i mean just i mean the, the quality of the actors it just is amazing amazing just stuff they're just they're not chewing scenery i mean i just they just they command the scenes the way they're doing it um i i'm really really enjoying that of well, the Mandalorian kind of ruined it for everybody to be. Well, fair. The, and it's that's its own thing, right? The pacing on exactly. that's amazing, but it's a totally different, uh, you know, crazy thing. But I, I, it's my anti, uh, what the frig is it? You know, House of Dragons. You know, House <laughs> of Borden. So I totally get that. Um.
I do want to say thank you so much for uh, the pinup at the end of the issue that we're discussing. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like an excellent choice to how to how to end an issue. <laughs> I love it. Well, again, it's it, and then too, it's a weird issue because it's like he doesn't appear in costume one, so here's a pinup of him in the, in the costume. I actually love right, that. Right, right. You capture the vibe. I, I I love especially like Daredevil and Spider Man when they're out in their city. Because Mar- there's nothing like Marvel's New York. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually think I, I don't have the plots, you know, as you guys know, a- anymore. I think they inserted that after the fact uh, and the, the pinup at the end because somebody, and I don't know how you possibly approve the story as it was. And we could talk about aspects of that, you know, and then worry about that he's not in costume the whole issue. So here he is, in case you forgot whose book this was, um, or have asked editorially for a correction within the story, which you could have used. But um, but maybe I added it too. I have no idea. I don't think I did. But all right. So yeah. So for you people who can't read the like, you know, the titles on this episode, yes, it's there. We'll talk Daredevil three sixteen, uh, which I was not and not Andor. Not House of Dragons, not yes, not Born Again. That's bonus. You get bonus this time. Bonus it's, content. But yeah, Daredevil three sixteen, which I always think of uh, as like a bookend with three hundred four. Exactly, uh, it was meant to be. It was. It was yeah. exactly a year later, right? So I don't know if you thought of this or not, but it's like, did you kind of uh, envision this as kind of mm-hmm. like, almost like a like I don't want to say opposite, but it's like you know three hundred four. He was out in the city just as Daredevil here. He's math the whole time. It, you know, he spends a week in this, well, here and there. A and week. <laughs> not a solid Across. week. He goes home. Okay. It's it's, he like, does yeah. go home. Right. It's different. Yeah. It's different from three, 304 for, uh, you know, folks who have not caught up with us, uh, was called 34 hours. And 34 hours was a direct line of time that Daredevil could, for various reasons, go read the story, uh, concentrate on say the the non extreme crimes but important moments that he could help with and it was this dedicated 34 hours he had to kind of keep at it and we sort of followed him from vignette to vignette and it turned out great it turned out with the the the, i thought you know the stories of the of the many things i wrote um and never looked at again and doubt it until you guys started this um (laughs) you know i always felt that one worked well and and of course ron did an amazing Ron Garney did an amazing job with it. And so as we came a year later, I, it just occurred to me, do, can we do that bookend? Can we do a series of vignettes that are about the flavor and character of New York and New Yorkers and, and how uh, Matt Murdoch daredevil could interact with them. But then it was that exact thing. It was, it was the sense that he was all daredevil all the time. What if he was all Matt all the time? And how do you play that out? And then the conceit became the subway uh, that we, we it's essentially subway stories where it, all the incidents are things that happen in the tunnels or in the trains um, that he encounters as he goes along, which was kind of an odd choice. Um, but I probably was spending a lot of time on the subway. I was going to and... say, yeah, the sub- subway <laughs> in New York will humble anybody. <laughs> right, <laughs> it is the right, great right. equalizer of New York. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so, uh, so that was it. It was just a series of vignettes of things big and small that he he can interact with without having to suddenly go put the horns on. Or he can just he can he can use his Matt Murdock isness and uh, and help without totally exposing um, himself or his uh, abilities. And were all these incidents in this issue purely from your mind, or did any of these come from like reading, you know, from the AKA the Chichester Fowls, you know? Right. <laughs> well, I, well, first thing, you know, I, I think we should, uh, you know, consider renaming the podcast like, you know, Chichester Therapy or, you know, at least comic <laughs> comic book therapy because I, I need a picture I, of you on a couch right away. <laughs> you know, exactly. Or, or in a, in a straight jacket, uh, more, more to it. But because uh, I think, as you know, when we ended last episode and you said, oh, this is the next one, I, I said, well, I don't really like that story. I don't really think very, very highly of it. Um, I don't think it worked. 
but you forced me to kind of go back in and <laughs> revisit these. And read them. Welcome to my world. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes for the first time. And, uh, and, and I, I thought it worked. I thought it was, yeah. it was actually, it was, it was a, it was a responsible, uh, I don't think it works as well as 34 hours, but I think it, it, um, it, it and we can talk about the, the problems that it has, but it, uh, it actually holds up and the vignettes, uh, work nicely and it, it does kind of achieve what it was supposed to do and, and does not disappoint i guess in the way that i thought it did i sort of i thought it was like a muddle and a jumble and a and a and a whatever and i thought it actually kind of clicked so most of the things uh rereading it um are things that were either from the files or things that i witnessed directly i i don't think i ever witnessed a a, a token sucker you, you know at work um you know people who would go to, in the old days kids before smartphones and and then you know, credit card swipers we used to drop little metal tokens into the subway turnstiles to to enter the uh, underground and uh, and apparently there was there was a thing and this would have been a, a newsday article i could just see this total newsday article about uh s token suckers who would then as somebody dropped a token it would basically follow them and suck the token <laughs> back out of the, the mechanism uh to get the buck 25 uh worth of it out of there um the can man uh you know there's a character uh, as he's going through who's creating these uh metal uh, taking metal tin cans and soda cans and carving them up into elaborate sculptures and has this litany of i'm the can man i'm the can man i, I remember that guy distinctly i mean <laughs> now i don't even thought of him in whatever but as we're reading it's like okay i remember that guy and and so they were a combination for the most part of things i read or directly saw um uh it, because you saw a lot of things on the subway um i think 90s the biggest new york yeah yeah the <laughs> 90s 80 i mean in 80s new york too i mean i'd been I'd, i'd come to new york in the first time in 82 83 um, oh right? wow yeah when i when i was when i i know i know right <laughs> um gets boy this this product is Times in the square wasn't even cleaned it, up then oh my god no it wasn't no it wasn't i remember seeing um uh et and maniac on a double bill that was uh that was the kind of that was your 42nd street theater experience you, you have et and maniac on one uh you know one setting so uh, but yeah, I think that was that was just a collection of things and thoughts and and bits and lines of dialogue, you know, the, the way people would would talk, uh, you know, the the vet about uh, serving the you know the country, the the uh, you know seeing the people in the wheelchair who are begging, and then when nobody's looking, you know, they get up and they walk, you know, <laughs> so uh, all those kind of things. Uh, just gotta become... check the shoes yeah yeah shoes. exactly right oh, you hit me on it mad it's like oh quit with that blind man routine <laughs> right 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 <laughs> but i i mean again yeah it, the story it age you know except for stuff like like tokens i mean this could be little tweaks this could be a story from today i mean this could be uh, sadly like, yeah i mean yeah. the whole ending <laughs> where they where they uh you know the cops draw down on the the black uh, undercover yeah. cop um was just uh that i certainly didn't witness um could have been a newsday article though but the the you know the miss uh directed racism and uh and targeting there was almost like oh jesus christ this is a <laughs> this feels like just something that just just happened um but the other incidents i don't know if all of it actually could be um because to Lilith's uh, skeevy reaction to the subway, I, she's probably experienced it a little bit. And uh, I don't know if it's that skeevy these days. You, oh, you know, it is. From, from, is it? <laughs> I, I'm on it. I'm on it so intermittently. Um, but I'll take your word for it then. I, I mean, I've never been on there, but I've heard stories. I'm like, is that, do, do people still use the train the train as a as a toilet? Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole yeah. subway in general. Um, I, I lived in New York for nine months and then, you know, I, I haven't been back since uh, 
twenty early twenty nineteen, but it was it was still still kind of crazy pretty, in twenty nineteen. Okay. <laughs> I was just okay. like, um, why can't it just be like Japan? Why can't we have light rail, clean, <laughs> well lit, <laughs> public travel? <laughs> yeah, you're you're. I'm taking your word for it. I mean, when I used to commute, you know, more I'd rather catch the bus in New York now. Honestly, <laughs> really, really. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm I ride now just the. Uh, I would say a main line. I'll go from say, <coughs> excuse me, Grand Central to 14th Street. Oh yeah, that's or, not or too bad. Like, but um, when I used to go around and I would go from Greenpoint or Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, into the city, and then Williamsburg and Greenpoint were not trendy as they are now. So uh, that would you'd be much expect them ride. to have cleaned that up with it being so you know gentrified, but nope. <laughs> not so much, huh? Okay. They gotta I mean, keep it tough. authentic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a syst- It's one of the few systems. Not defending it, you know, but it's oh no, it's so great. It's that, just showing that its runs twenty four seven. Yeah, for the most part, it's always open. You but, know, American yeah, you infrastructure. It's just you know we don't really put a lot of uh, time yeah. and thought into it or care. So, and I also brought things from late at night into the middle of the day. You know, and you wander around and you probably will see anything at any hour of the day. But if I was picking something up at at uh you know 11 p.m or 2 a.m um hours i would not necessarily ride these days but uh, i you know those would be bits and pieces i would have collected and said oh that the way that guy's looking or the way you know somebody's giving that person heat or angst you know that would be the way to go i did love the classic baby being born though (laughs) yeah and, and that feels like that was um probably uh a newsday thing you know and and yeah but it's and it was you know a single page emotional thing um worked out worked out okay there there were some there were some massive moments of like just stop the guy with the captions there's just so many like jesus christ you know the opening page alone is just all right you made your point dan you know that uh you know lots lots of lots of details in the subway it's you don't need to go through the entire construction history of how many stones they brought out or how many steps there are exactly one would do, but you know, <laughs> clearly I, I had done my research and wanted everybody to know it. <laughs> no, I liked it. There wasn't like a ton of mad dialogue. It was more like you narrating the thing than, a, you yeah. know, kind of, it, I, I like that. Matt know. never has much to say though, outside of being like, like Matt, the person not like daredevil. So I, mm. I, for me, that fit. And a two, it wasn't like one. I mean, it is one long story, but it's like you jump from day to day, so it's like a bunch of little vignettes and stuff. So, right, right, yeah, right. Like we, we use the stations instead of the hours. Right, right. Thirty, thirty-four hours. Every every setup was a location, but it was also it's hour fifteen, it's hour ten, it's hour whatever. And here we just jumped from Fourteenth uh, Street station to this station to that station. But and um, I don't know if you remember or not, but. Uh, why was I was why wasn't Scott on this? I mean, the art was good, but I'm like, I was I would have been interested to see Scott's take on this. But I was like, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe maybe they're giving him time to rev up because Fall from Grace is coming. Well, maybe, but I don't think so. I, I don't remember. I don't remember why, because I remember we still had the the two Grease issues that would follow. Yeah. Follow mm. this. Um, so I do not remember uh, what was going on uh, with Scott at that time. If he was. uh you know, I can't remember any major life incident. Maybe he got married around that time, but I can't remember uh, for sure. Oh, but good a, thing he came back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But on a good note, um, I know I'd said before, like there was like a gap on Marvel Unlimited, like it, like from three issue three hundred to three nineteen, there was nothing in there. They filled that mm-hmm. in. So, oh, have they? Okay, yeah, so they okay. heard you, Phil. They know how many people you refer to the app. They heard you, Phil. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'm glad it's it's all there, and I don't have to like go. Um, well, I'll probably still just go to the the, you know, not the dark corners of the web, but the lightly shadowed ones. Where it's like, oh look, you scan that in for me. I don't have to go find. Them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So more and more of your work is going up on there. So that's awesome. People As we wrap up for the Daredevil TV show, I might one may suspect. <laughs> They want to uh, fill in those gaps. They got time. I don't think it starts till twenty twenty four. So yeah, it's yeah. All, well, all it actually takes a lot to to scan it in correctly. 
Mm. As a person who does that for their own comics so that I can have it in the cloud and not have to like have so many in my actual house. <laughs> there yeah, you go. To get to get it perfectly correct, it does take a lot of time for just one single issue. So do you and have then one to of those transfer overhead it. overhead I scanners, do. like those book scanners. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can also use the um if you have a large receipt scanner, the one that can take the full page, that's also very <laughs> helpful. Okay. Too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. No, I will I'm... defend the interns. I will defend yeah. the interns. Yeah, I just wanted. No. I just wanted to say it's easier to find his work now too, because if you can't find the back issues, because I don't know, if, I don't think this is in a collection, but yeah, it's Whoa. all Arc One Limited. So it might be in one of the Epic ones. I'm not sure. Oh, but, oh, oh uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, it could. It could be. Um, because they they got pretty good about it. No, I mean, I I, I would be lying if I if I said it wasn't fun and gratifying to finally have just some let alone it seems at this point probably all of the work you know reprint it in one form or another you know there'd be these sad moments for many years going to the bookstore and there'd be the trade collections of this daredevil story and that daredevil story and and the two of mine that i would have thought most appropriate which would have been fall from grace and and fall the kingpin uh both of which defensively are pretty good stories and had some uh uh traction you could never find the trade collections you know there were trade collections of both and there'd be this and then this you know obviously born again and frank miller stuff uh totally expected but i thought some fairly obscure collections of like <laughs> other folks who'd worked on it and there's like you know what did i do wrong uh but uh it, it's uh it's all out there now so it's I go go get it I mean, it is. A, I mean, they need to reprint them all. But I'm like, I always thought it would be a nice little collection of uh, 304, that 312 and 313 we covered last time, and then this issue. I, I thought mm. that would make it like a nice little four right, like a package. kind of like yeah. a like a, a New York stories type of thing. I mean, that, yeah. that's that's something that I would assume there's a reprint editor, um, but you would think there's a a a big chart that actually starts to combine those things because. Just because they've reprinted it once doesn't mean they can't reprint it 30 more times. I mean, that's that's certainly the Disney model and just recollecting them in different assemblies. It's actually not a bad idea. You know, you could just take because I'm sure Bendis, Wade, uh, you know, anybody right has got a couple of uh, I'll, let's call them just New York story, Daredevil stories. Right. And um, Wade might have San Francisco stories. I don't know. But uh you just package them that way and then and go go for it have fun yeah because sometimes they do hard cover soft cut then the soft cover and like little right the closer we get to that series they're gonna be looking for any excuse to print anything daredevil right i yeah i would assume i would assume so print to the point where none I'm of it will sell to our daredevil renaissance <laughs> <laughs> Um, not to get too personal, but like for the Marvel Unlimited, like do you get residuals like for like re like per reads or downloads or anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean Marvel has been um, uh, you know, it's e easy for folks to to diss on them, uh, I, I guess for for various reasons, but I will say they have been uh, really responsible um, and kept track of me, you know, over the years uh, with. Um, I think the technical term would be in an in incentive payments. I think that's that's the way it's sort of like tracked out as. And uh, does it work like Kindle, where uh, it's like per page? Like you, like usually, like yeah, I think it is per page. There was a um, going back to the orig original original uh, work for hire thing, and and what you were sort of signing on to. It was it was a certain percentage of of sales after a certain number. So and the number was pretty high, you know, because they Naturally. at that point the books were were selling extraordinary numbers. Uh, so say say the number was eighty thousand copies or or whatever, uh, of which today nothing or very few things you know would sell at that number. But eighty thousand, then the incentive payment would would kick in, and I want to say the incentive. And I'm just making these numbers up, but I want say the incentive was three percent, right? That three percent maybe 4% would then be split between the primary people. So say the writer might get 1%, the penciler would get 1%, the inker might get, might get 1%, and then the colorist um, 
and I don't know if the letter or God incentives, you know, would split the, the, the other, you know, the other ones. So, um, but it could add up, you know, it, it, it would add up uh, on big sales and, and now, uh, you know, they keep track of the digital sales and I'm sure I signed something foolishly without really reading it. Um, uh, you know, in the interim, uh, that sort of covered, uh, that type of thing, but the, I've gotten incentive payments for the digital comics as well as the, you know, the print ones. Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes it's been, uh, $4 and 92 cents, you, you know, <laughs> And sometimes it's been a couple hundred bucks, you know, so that's, not, that's been a nice, that's a nice surprise. I mean, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, there was one, I remember, uh, I was eyeing a, a, a technology toy that I really didn't need at all. And, and, and it's like, yeah, well, okay, this, this is where you've matured and you'll pause and not hit purchase right away. And then, and then a couple of days later, I got actually a pretty big incentive check you know, for a few hundred dollars and said, okay, well, that's, that's the, the universe saying to you that you need this. That was my justification. So, or that Relatable. you can get, you can, you can get it. You still didn't need it, but, but it's been fun. I mean, at least with the digital, they can track that. And at least you get a little, little something. Cause I, it's like, if I go to my local shop and I buy something you wrote in the nineties, like kind of a back issue bin or something, you're not going to yeah. from that. You'll get yeah. nothing with that. Right. That's, that's, you know, that was the, you know, um, the convoluted rationale for uh, you know nfts these non-fungible tokens with like digital art and and that at least from an artist's point of view and maybe for a writer's point of view if they were uh tagging it excuse me um it, you know you could sort of keep track of something like that and then maybe get some kind of payment for it but um uh, but certainly yeah if you're buying a back issue now you're getting I'm getting your enjoyment of the story out of it. If we run into each yeah. other <laughs> at a con or you decide to write me, you know, uh, track me down and drop me a note, but no, I don't get anything from there. Um, uh, it Got would only it. be the Marvel newer collections. The <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and, or do both. Uh, right. Right. You know, and, and there's probably a kind of convoluted uh, assembly around um, the digital uh, payments and the rights both in terms of buying it on something like Marvel Unlimited or Comixology, but also uh, apps like uh, Hoopla, you know, the, the library app, which features a lot of comics. But I, I believe there's a a per read payment, you know, type of thing that that's how that works with those, I think. But anyway, I get something now and again, and it's it's uh, I'm not going to retire on it, but it's. It's it's nice to sort of see it. My my uh, guy who does my taxes is like, I oh, working for Marvel again. Not so much, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> not, not so much, but uh, you know, it's, uh, something came in that I declared. You say that's nice. At least you're getting the enough that uh, you have to declare it on your taxes. Yeah. Well, you know, I declare everything because I'm stupid. You know. But... <laughs> <laughs> No, well, you know, as a creative, they, it's better they, safe than sorry, honestly. Right, and, and if they send you a check, you know, then then they've reported it somewhere, so uh, you may as well step hey, it up. Hey, it's better to do that than uh, I don't want to see a headline six months from now. Former Daredevil writer, uh, <laughs> exactly. Tax, you know, even Matt Murdock couldn't defend this tax scandal, right? You know, um, I think you'd be better off with Jennifer, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally, totally. Me and my kid, I think I said this, you know, me and my kid would joke during the Netflix, you know, series that if Matt ever, like, actually focused, he'd be, Amazing. you know, he is a great lawyer, but he doesn't focus, and you really want Foggy working for you. You don't want Murdoch, because he's going to be distracted, and, you know, decide he's just going to go out at night and just beat the problem into submission. <laughs> I mean, at least with your run, at least when he wasn't in the office, he was doing like worthwhile stuff like, you know, keeping like in this, you know, keeping people on the subway from getting stabbed or something. Uh, you know, so other times well, that, other writers, it's just like, oh, he's punching ninjas in the face, you know, half a world away. It's like, well, that was that was my read on the character. Right. I, yeah. I thought the tortured altar boy ish aspect of him was had to translate into I want to do good. And, and that goes back to the you know, the edicts of how he was brought up, you know, if his father had let him come into the gym and train uh, with him, even when he was blind or whatever, it might've become even more of a brawler and whatever, but you know, you're going to use this. You're not going to do this, even though he would do it. 
total hypocrite. Um, but you know, <laughs> tortured, tortured soul hypocrite. But uh, <clears throat> you don't become a lawyer or do the vigilanteism or do the tortured, you know, Catholic uh, routine if you don't have some sense of wanting to do do good. No, that's why I said I, would, I always keep telling you this. I That's why I liked about your run is it seemed like he was a man of the people. Even the bigger stories like Fall from Grace, you know, he saw the guy who was trapped in the middle of this conspiracy, Eddie, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's that's a really that's a that's a really great read. I'm glad there was a uh, a consistent sort of soul to, uh, you know, to it. Thank you, Phil. I, I think I think that's kind of uh, what I don't know. Some writers kind of lose with like current Daredevil. It's just like. He seems more focused on the big picture and not like the people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's you, you, in... you can't, you, you're never going to win against corruption. I'm sorry. What you can do is you can, you can do the little things. <laughs> well, Especially that's a good, that's Marvel's New York. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a great read too. And, and, uh, you know, I'll never, uh, it, when I was, much younger, you know, would, I would have quickly piled on and, you know, snarked about writer X and I'll still do that for the right writer. Don't, don't, we're not going to lose that entertainment value, but, uh, you know, I don't know all the things that, that folks go through, you know, maybe somebody introduces scenes of, uh, real, you know, down in the street, you know, do goodness. And, and somebody comes back and says, no, you got to, that, that no reader wants to read that you know we've got to we've got to we've got to get to the next crossover or maybe people just don't think about it because frankly you know when you're churning out monthly comics especially and i've been there right um uh, it, it's really easy to think about the big incidents and just crank the dial on that and uh and and just rush forward so i can see both sides I mean, we've talked about it before, but I think there's a bit pressure on like all current writers. Let's say, like, oh, what's the next big event? You know? Yep. Right. And and they maybe dictate it that event to some extent too. If it's a big crossover thing, or or maybe you're manufacturing, you know, a big a big crossover thing yourself, and maybe you're driving it. Um, I was. Uh, what was the thing that's um the Daredevil one, the Devil's Reign? Yeah. Thing, right? uh, was that? Yeah. Or, yeah. Was that was that a self-contained Daredevil story? Did that draw in? I know it drew in characters, but did that affect other books? As uh, well? It was a mini series, and then it had kind of like uh, spinoffs between one and three issue spinoffs and stuff. So, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So it was almost like a like a an epic event in its own in its own right. Which was crazy because the Spider Man thing was going at the same time as Spider Man. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I know there was a Spider Man, <laughs> there was a Devil's Reign tie in, which was also happening at the same time when they were doing something in Spider Man where Ben Rowley was back. So, like, Spider Man, it was like in the middle of two crossovers <laughs> in one issue. So, right, 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 right. Which Spider Man is it? You guess here, scratch off, you know, get a sticker. Make it's it pain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Sorry, um, Phil. Not so, no, <laughs> I, I'm just me who take us off track, not you. No. So, Lil, Lil, if you go, you, you haven't been here. No, before. like I said, I, I really dig. Like, I love when Matt is in the city. Like, I, I, I love how you capture the city. And I mean, the city is a character in all the, in your whole run. But like, when you just get down to like the, like the actual people level, I, I really enjoy it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that's, I, Again, reading it over again, I'm like, hey, that works. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, that's what I intended. I I do like the little people uh, bits and stuff. I think because um, how can we get through an episode without being you know self critical? Uh, I think that the attempt to be some junior league Scorsese or whatever and just play with street <clears throat> excuse me dialogue. Uh, doesn't work as well in comics because there's some of the overlapping balloons and a little bit where even though the pointers are going to people, it's a little hard to kind of, I think, reading it now, keep track of who's saying what when they're incidental characters. So there might have been something to work with the letter on that where we might have changed the shape of the balloon a little bit or maybe even colored the balloons to kind of help them keep track of that um, uh, you know, sort of interesting side dialogue that was coloring the scenes, but wasn't, say, the main driver, especially toward that 
that end incident where so much is happening, right? These the, the con games going with the guy in the wheelchair and the the thieves are breaking in and the guys are, uh, you know, the cops are, are shooting their their uh, their partner. So a lot of stuff going on, um, which all adds up. But uh, it takes it, uh, it just takes some, I think, think rethinking of it. And my favorite panel, and I, I think Phil should know what my favorite panel is, is where he's just walking in the subway, whistling and tapping his cane through, and it's just like tap, tap. Because it's, it's kind of an inside joke about, like, uh, Matt tapping his way downtown. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is it. This is the panel. Oh, <laughs> the, um, where he's, like, tapping out the kids can't remember the song because they're yeah. freezing up. And yeah. then he sort of, like, he taps out the beat for them. That was, yeah, that was, uh, that was rereading that that was that was fun and that was you know here's a little simple way that he can overhear it you know now he's got a sense of rhythm uh more than i do uh and uh you know it was uh it was fun to do that and uh, picking up on a couple you know my own in jokes you know, the me nobody knows which is the musical they're talking about was actually something we performed in my high school <laughs> so there you go <laughs> uh, um which uh was totally obscure musical but uh uh yeah there was little little bits like that were definitely fun to to read again and and uh, a different way of looking at the the character that was what i was gonna ask okay so besides that were there any other personal touches in here anybody you knew in this issue or <laughs> there's that hand there's a ham-fisted clive barker reference i know that there's <laughs> that you know it's looking for a clive barker audiobook um uh, I, again, I just think it's the, the things that I, I witnessed, you know, over the years, yeah. you know, the bits of dialogue, the can man guy, um, uh, you know, the, the, um, you know, didn't actually see anybody attack, uh, a subway booth, uh, attendant and, and crash through the glass, but certainly saw a number of people who looked like they could. Um, the pennies talk was a, a constant litany from attendants of, when they would have to take the payment at the toll, uh, not the toll booth, but at the token booth. And you actually have to pay them. You know, the, I remember more than one person, um, the sing songing of no pennies, no pennies, no pennies. So definitely it was just trying to live the life in the subway uh, and, and see how that plays out. Also myths to live by Joseph. Campbell. Yeah. 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 That was, that was, that was ham fisted too. Yes. That was definitely, <laughs> definitely. You're right. Yes, thank you for that. N <laughs> neither, neither of those were elegant, um, and uh, and definitely. It's okay. Tread... It's to get the kids to read. It's yeah, okay. you know, but it, it treads over into uh, uh, and even the like I said, the de some of the some of the details about the subway. I think definitely work and key in. It's like there's this many steps. There's this many stations. There's this many you know hours that went into constructing it or whatever. Any one of those would have served the purpose. They don't need all of them and you know my friend greg wright uh but this you history know, of the subway in new york is actually super fascinating so it is super I, fascinating. i'll allow it i'll allow it's, it it is super fascinating but you don't have to as he said to me you know on many occasion you know uh you don't have to prove how fucking re well read you are and you know that's <laughs> and that, as a writer and that, what's the point if you can't do well that? you know that's the the uh yes there's there is everything in moderation, right? It's uh, you don't need to kind of get it all out there, all on one page, uh, spread it out. But uh, but yeah, there was nobody who was specifically, oh, that was my good friend there, or that's a reference to, you know, my grandfather or, or something like that. But uh, but it, incident wise, it it felt it did definitely take me back into traveling the subway in the sense of living in New York and observing those things. Which is actually pretty good when you think about it, to to evoke at least those sensations in me. I must have been been kind of carving out a, a niche that I understood. And I don't know if you'll remember or not, but um, when you started writing this script, did you assume Scott was going to be on this, or did you know right away that you were going to have a fill-in artist? And if you started thinking it was going to be Scott, did you change anything, or did you want to change anything once you realized it was going to be a different artist? That's a great question. I don't remember uh, in detail. My gut would tell me I, that because I can't remember the incident or reason why Scott wasn't on that issue. 
you know, as opposed to say when he and I took a break to go do Electra or, or something like that. Um, uh, so I would, I, my presumption would be that I was writing it as if Scott was going to do it. And, and, but in writing for Scott at that point, uh, writing, you know, with Scott at that point, uh, I guess for Scott is right. Uh, there would be, I, I can't think of anything that I would have introduced specifically that would have been a change because he wasn't doing it. You, you know, there wasn't writing for Scott later as we got more simpatico. And I, and I, and I kind of knew in my mind's eye what Scott would do. I, I think I would get more shorthanded or, or describe things more um, in line with we were, we seemed very in sync um, you know, to, to me. Uh, but this was, you know, he was still playing with, his whatever you know he was, he was still bagley light you know in in some ways and uh and he was still exploring things so there was no real distinctive the same level of distinctive quality that he would later achieve hmm. yeah i just i I've, I've heard our writers say you know sometimes they tune the writing to you know who whatever artist they're working for and you know sometimes if midway through you know you get kicked the you know a curveball of, oh hey it's a different you know it's gonna be a different artist sometimes well yeah i mean totally if there was if, you know if you did a story and you know it was on a horse farm and you got an artist who hates drawing horses <laughs> uh you might want to change that up uh, for safety's sake um and in my mind's eye i probably was hoping we'd get garney you know if we were gonna yeah. get anybody we'd get garney for the total bookend um, but I, in my mind's eye, I was probably seeing that, even thinking that it was going to be Scott, that it would have that more, um, I guess, realistic, you know, street feel uh, to, to it, to sort of mirror it and to kind of feel like it was really part of that world, as opposed to hyper, uh, uh, you know, hyped up. Not that this feels hyped up. I think this this actually worked out pretty well. The storytelling was was really good and felt very nice and natural for the for the most part yeah i would have loved to see ron again but it, you know ron garney i think what the 90s you probably had to get on the waiting list to get ron garney for your book well uh you know what what um you know garney didn't didn't really break big for a, a while he should have broke big earlier but he was he was always i mean ron was like this fully formed thing right? <laughs> you know in my mind like like lee lee, lee weeks yeah. Uh, where where not that they have not advanced as artists they they have but look at Ron's stuff from that day and age he's an incredibly mature artist right out of the gate right he's got a total command of and he gets better right over time but he's got such a command of figure and character and storytelling um which is still reflected even more so reflected today but he should have broke huge he should have been top of the top and and not that he wasn't in demand but he was also not image, right? So yeah. he had he had the the disadvantage of being a fabulously talented artist who should have really been here. And I'm putting my hand way up for folks who are just listening, um, way way earlier. And now he's getting uh, the overnight success of Berserker and and well <laughs> well deserved. Overnight success means thirty years in the making, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly right no, so it's, it's everybody there's a huge debate going among you know some uh comic profession not a debate but it's this weird side discussion it's not hidden you can find it like on twitter you know among people and some some people who've been around for many years are just like rolling their eyes at trolls who are coming out saying you know yeah yeah you know you're you know you, you've got all this work now and you know you're really successful and and uh you know you're just kind of coming out of nowhere it's like i'm coming out of nowhere after doing you know, for 25 years or i've been doing this 25 years and it's been a been a, a dedicated slog and i'm not you know i pay my bills one at a time like everybody else so it's this weird balance of, of things but um but yeah i think it's a great question phil i wish i had a better answer for you um but i think i wrote it more just the intention of of it being about the city and about yeah. matt and in some ways it's, it's if, and someday, uh, 
you know, maybe that'll be my next newsletter, like premium <laughs> of the few things I have. I still have the original Daredevil proposal, right? The one that won me the, the job, um, which I don't know if I've ever put out in, in the ether, but, um, uh, but might be a fun read. But that was always about the city being a character as well, right? The, the two parts of that yeah. proposal were, you know, kick Willie in the in the cojones and the and it, kick, kick Willie in the willy, right? That would have been a great title. Um, but uh, <laughs> instead of instead of last rites or fall of the kingpin, that was the uh, the working title, and uh, and the other part was making the character the city a character. And I feel like through this, the city does feel like a character. I know. I'm and I'm, I'm impressed. You, uh, yeah, you you brought the uh, fall of the kingpin within the first year. I mean, there's writers now they they'll stretch they'd stretch it out two three years. Uh. Yeah, well, that was hubris, and uh, and knowing we were getting toward 300, and and had to do something big for 300, and just kind of coming out of the gate with all all guns blazing, and uh, and not knowing what you're doing, and <laughs> well, no, I mean, and, like, not, and not overthinking it, you know. I, I'm glad. Sometimes I'm glad when someone doesn't drag it out. It's kind too. of akin to you know Jerry Jerry Conway just going ahead and killing <laughs> Gwen Stacy. He's like, who's gonna stop me? <laughs> <laughs> and it changes things. It changes the status quo, and you know, right? Sometimes right. it needs to be done. Yeah, it needs to happen because uh, you know, otherwise it was like, oh, no one could stop the kingpin. Spider Man, exactly. Daredevil, Punisher, no one's stopping the kingpin ever. Well, that was my, but that was my proposal, and that was my frustration as a reader. Was it was going through the the story after story after story of of you cross this line one more time fat man and, and you know and you're you're no i mean this line here if you cross this line uh, you know it's almost like you know it's it's a it's a saturday night live routine you know where it's uh uh it, it just keeps going so there's no there's no teeth to it anymore so there is no line there is no repercussions and you just keep playing out the same scene because it's it's convenient right and it feels like it's got a little bit of dramatic tension but ultimately you had to deliver, you have to deliver on that. And that was the easy conceit I had was let's actually deliver on it. It's um, like the programmer who goes to get a job at like his favorite video game place. He fixes the bug and then quit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Or adds, you know, I want, I want one more inventory slot. I put that in there and now it's my, my work is done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you, you showed great restraint in issue 300. I mean, you had that Peter Parker cameo. He easily could have suited up. You could have had Spider-Man on the cover. No, Peter Parker just answer goes, yeah, punch him in the face for me. <laughs> <laughs> Give him one for me. You know, it's like. <laughs> but yeah, great restraint. Yeah, no, yeah, that Punisher could have showed up. But now, no, no. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. no, no. talk about your hubris. No, you. you was there pressure? I, I would assume there was pressure to do that, though, right? for 300 yeah for, for, no there was no pressure on that i mean there was there was no there wasn't the, all the pressure was me and lee you know just wanting to to knock it out of the park and uh and have an and, event for 300 and, around 300, and having a, yeah. have an event for 300 and we we knew what it meant to us and presumably to editorial and and the readers and and you know we were following Miller and Nascenti, right? I mean, you know, you know writing-wise, and and you know, art-wise, Jr. and and uh, and Masakelli and and all that stuff in our minds, and we were nobodies. So, um, and and that was a big pressure to sort of you have got to do something here. That the, that was the pressure, but there was no there was no uh, you know sense of um, of uh, you know you got to include this, you got to do this, you got to do that because also M Marvel had. And as we've talked about before, had a sort of a weird, uh, whatever, uh, unfocus on Daredevil uh, when it wasn't the superstars doing it. So, you know, we were now the ordinary team and it wasn't going to get some real prominence again until Frank Miller came back again. So, uh, so we could have done anything and, and we did, we just ran, ran with what we wanted. I mean, do you think there's more pressure on everyone now for writing Daredevil just because it's like, oh, yeah, he was on Netflix. He showed up on She-Hulk. He's getting his own series again. You he know, showed up in home, uh, no, no Way Home. Oh, no Way <laughs> Home. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, yeah, is there yeah. way more pressure when it's like, oh, yeah, he's, a, you know, this character's in the public eye, you know. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know what the internal, you know, mechanics are or how much the movie world influences what they do in the comics. Uh, I'm sure it does to some extent, but they don't really do that many call outs to the comics in the movies. So uh, it doesn't really, does it really matter if they quote unquote kill Thor in the comic? And, and I think it's more, uh, probably, um, uh, integrating with timing in terms of sales that if daredevil is a big deal uh, when born again comes out there's going to be a lot of attention and interviews and, and you know specials and whatever that uh, that they have a lot of product available that can uh, and probably not even playing to the, the the person who becomes a fan of daredevil from watching disney plus and and doesn't know about the comic it's probably more for the current devotees of, of daredevil who are just charged up our guys getting his moment you know let's go out and and buy whatever's coming out whatever special limited series you know is happening and oh that collection of new york stories that i heard about first on chichester chats and <laughs> you know and whatever else that uh they're gonna you know stack up for you know you, know, you should just tweet that out phil you know exactly no sometimes you just gotta manifest it honestly you do it's, it's actually a pretty good idea i mean it, it's a very good idea and on uh, there's got to be a good collection of, like we said of new york stories so why not do a whole little flip and i mean well every story that is in new york with daredevil is a new york story no right we're talking uh, no. about we're talking about, <laughs> talking about new york stories and well, i think there's yeah, probably well, some really good again, ones yeah there's four i mentioned i mean he's not and i don't think there's not one occasion in either any of those four issues where he's punching like a super villain in the face you know right right but there's got there's there's other ones like that yeah. there's 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 plenty of plenty of great stories like that or moments that people have brought together so you could easily bring it uh you know bring it into a, that type of collection yeah but no, I mean, the comics kind of seem to do like subtle nods to like shows and stuff because like I like me and Lothar are always saying, yeah, like when the Punisher uh, show was out, Punisher looked very Frank uh, or uh, John. Very Baron Paul. And like right now, like uh, Sam Wilson's book, Sam Wilson is looking very Anthony Mackie in his own series. So. Oh, oh, OK. Yeah. OK. All right. So. All right. So that kind of thing. I, I'm so. sure if, the that, if that catch ketchup and mustard costume shows up, we'll know why. <laughs> I'm sure the artists are getting their marching orders. Like, <laughs> yeah, make them look like the actors if you know if they're in a series. Or... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's that's a. I mean, I don't think the current Daredevil looks like. No, no. Some of them um, it doesn't like Spider-Man, Daredevil. They seem to get away with it, but yeah, once you start getting down to like the Punisher, Sam Wilson, they're they, all they right. They can't change Peter Parker. I'm sorry. <laughs> they well, just well, can't again, in the movies, they, you know, he's a he's a kid in high school. He's a grown yeah. adult in the comics. So yeah, that'd be kind of right, 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 right. Yeah, and you know, it depends on the artist and what their influence is and what their talent level is and how charged up they are about maybe they love john berthal you know they think and he is I mean, a great phenomenal you know, like, actor i, I want to make great and i want to uh, that that guy you you can certainly look at 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 comics over time i mean look at the comics from the 80s and 90s you can you can you can see um the influence of certain actors on characters because an artist was inspired by. Yeah, Bronson. we can't let that Samuel L. Jackson thing ever happen again. Well, so. well, <laughs> even not that specific. I mean, even not that specific. I mean, you know, just in the sense of of uh, you know, again, somebody might have thought that Bronson would have been the perfect Punisher. I'm not saying they did, but you can probably look at some like of some of Zek's work or um, you know Mark Texier or whatever. Uh, I'm just pulling those guys out of the blue i'm not i'm not saying but they would have been influenced by by an actor and sort of said oh that feels like uh a way to kind of create something an attitude body language right i want this guy to have feel like he's christopher lee or something like that you can see little hints of it you know maybe in the in the way that it comes out in the page All right, so Lilith, do you have any other questions for this man? No, I think it's time to let him enjoy his Saturday, although it is always fabulous picking his brain. It's always a fabulous way to start my Saturdays with you guys, so thank you again. All right, and for the homework, kids. Uh-oh. Uh, all right, we've been doing Daredevil for the last couple months, so I figure I'll mix it up, and I, I believe Lilith will give her seal of approval for this pick. We'll do some Milestone and uh, do some Blood Syndicate 31 and 32 from like oh, 5. So. Awesome. 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 
Yeah, I'm looking that, forward to revisiting pick. that. I am looking forward. Those are incredible things to work on. Um, and uh, and that'll be a great, great revisit. And so, those are newer for me. So, yeah. So, this, yes, this will be an interesting take. I wish I had the uh, the Dakota Bible still. That would have been, uh, that would <gasps> oh. be an amazing piece of stuff. I'm sure they don't want to, re- I'm sure Dennis has it, but uh, I'm sure they doesn't want to release it to the wild. Um, but that was, that was, a, we can talk about that there. That was, from what I remember, that was an incredible piece of work talk about something in Lilith with what scanned in and sent to her <laughs> exactly no now i'd she... buy it i'd buy the hardcover instantly i don't care how much it costs i i'm yeah. a huge, huge like that whole universe means so much to me oh that was a that was a phenomenal phenomenal like dedicated piece of writing and world building you know but be before the comics themselves you know just yeah just like what they is had Dakota? It, they had it ready to go <laughs> They had it ready to go. They knew what they were well, doing. Well, I mean, that's like a lifelong dream, so I would hope so. So, yeah, we'll be able to do a deep dive on Milestone, too, then next time. So Super, super. All right. All uh, right. I know you plugged the newsletter. Do you want to plug that again or anything else? Oh, yes. Talk? Thank you for the reminder. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, check out storymaze.substack.com, depending on when this uh, airs or runs. Uh, we are in the Halloween time as we're speaking. We're a couple, three days before um, the hellfire erupts on Halloween. And um, uh, mine, if you sign up for my newsletter, you can read it for free. But if you subscribe, you get the series Bible to Clive Barker's Hellraiser, which was the horror anthology I created and uh, or co-created and uh, and ran, you know, for a little bit of time. So uh, that's the new premium. We used to give away the plot to Daredevil 380. Uh, but this is the new uh, subscribers uh, bonus. See, kids, he's not leaving you hanging. Nope, nope, nope. Except and Marvel, with reprint, Marvel, reprint more of his Daredevil. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Mix it up. Different collections. Yeah. All right. So, All right, yeah. guys. Once again, the great Mr. DG Chichester, kids. Follow him on social All right. media. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Thanks, sir. Bye-bye.